it's yo girl the word of god girl and we finna eat and come sup with me come sup with me what up y'all what's up it's me it's your girl it's word of god girl i am happy to be back with you guys on today september was a very it was a difficult month it was trying um my daughter was the sickest i've seen her and then there was just stuff happening it was a little of this it was a little of that but how many of you know like i know god specializes in healing and in handling a little of this a little of that that being said i am so grateful and i am ready to have this conversation because we are talking about connections and I'm not talking about the connection between your cell phone, laptop, and the internet. So if not that connection, what other connections do we make? And how many do we make throughout the day? What about the connections that you make at work? Um, are you involved with any groups? How about the connection between you and your husband or you and your wife? Hmm. <laughs> Now that's a connection and I gotta love that one. And then of course there is the connection between you and your kids and you and your friends. So the question is not only how many connections you make, um, but what is the significance of it? What is the significance of it? What is the importance of the connection? If you were to go a whole day without um, communicating with your family members, your friends, what would that be like? And if you were to rate how important connecting to these individuals is on a scale of one to five, with five being the highest, what would you give it? Most of us would give it a five. And we do not allow too much time to go by without making the connection because we need the connection and it is important to us. Now, all the connections that we just talked about are very important. They're very necessary. But do you know that there is one that is more vital than all of them? Are you familiar with the true vine? Do you know the significance of it in your life and understand why you must be connected to the right source? In John chapter 15, Jesus says, I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman. We are about to get into the juiciness of the true vine right now. Guys, what question do I ask you in almost all of my videos at this point in my video? It is, where is your Bible? Donde estas tu Biblia? Why do I want you to get your Bible? Think of it this way. This is another opportunity, in addition to the studying that you're already doing, for you to get into your Word. Remember, you can always visit your phone's app store and download a Bible there. Y'all know I read the King James Version of the Bible and have put the scriptures from today into the description box. This way you can go back over the scriptures after the video. Note taking is a very good idea. And I hope you got your pen and your paper because we finna eat. Do you know there is a direct relationship between what you are connected to and what's produced? I love the passage of scripture in John chapter 15 because the revelation is complete, it is full, and it is absolutely awesome. In John chapter 15 verse 1, Jesus is talking and he states, um, he is the true vine. So we know he's the connection. God is the husbandman. God, the husbandman, tends to us, the branches, because we are connected to Jesus, the vine. Already this is good. In verse 2 it says, Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, so that it may bring forth more fruit. No fruit, your branch is removed. And in the same way, some of us need to remove some unfruitful people and some unfruitful situations from our lives. You need assistance with that? You see who the expert remover is? It's God. Take it to him in prayer. And then you put some action to it with your works. Now, on the other hand, if you are a fruit bearing branch, when you have produced the right amount of fruit, God comes and he removes it. But why? 
think about a bunch of grapes. If there are too many grapes on that bunch, they fall to the ground where they are or can possibly be spoiled by bugs or they rot. Not only that, but an overcrowded branch's production of fruit is hindered. So removal of the fruit on the branch allows for more fruit, AKA, which is also known as, which is a throwback, <laughs> growth in the things of God. Okay, so we got that part. Now, what is fruit in the biblical sense? I'm glad you asked. We're gonna look at Jeremiah 17 and 10. And it says, I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing. So your fruit is what you do. It is how you are. It is the outcome of the choices that you make every day. Now, I have to state the fruit that you bear connected to Jesus' vine system is good fruit. And how do I know this? The Bible says in Galatians 5:22 and 5:20 5:22 and 23 that the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, which is self-control. All of these attributes are good, plus we know Jesus never sinned. So Jesus does not produce sin or ill behavior. That stuff comes from your flesh. So it makes sense that whatever fruit we bear connected to Jesus is good fruit. What does good fruit look like? I'm glad you asked. Good fruit is practicing holiness and righteousness. It's being a witness for the kingdom of God. It is mimicking Jesus's behavior. And you gotta know, Jesus was all about our heavenly father's business. There is a story in the Bible where Jesus and his family are visiting a town. The family pack up and they leave the town, but Jesus stays behind, but his parents don't know this. They get to the next town, they figure out they don't have Jesus, and they rush back to go get him. When they find Jesus, Jesus is sitting with the doctors, he is listening to them, and he is sharing with them. And when his mama gets to him, she says, Jesus, why did you do that? Don't you know uh, that I was worried when you stayed behind? And Jesus said to her, he said, Mama, I don't know why you were worried. Didn't you know I was about my father's business? Listen, Jesus was 12 years old when he had that conversation with his mother. Since Jesus was about our heavenly father's business, you know what I'm about to say. You mimic Jesus's behavior and you be about our heavenly father's business as well. Verse three says, now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Clean is an attribute of fruit that is ready to be used. Verse 4 says, Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. Live in me and I live in you because this is required to bear fruit. Are you examining your fruit in any way right now and questioning it? and saying, is it big enough? Is my branch full enough? Get closer to God. It's time to pray more. It's time to fast more. It's time for more of those intimate worship sessions, just you and God. Take some additional time and get before him. So what else does the word of God say about fruit? We're gonna look at Romans 6 and 22 and it says, but now, being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. So our connection to Jesus's vine system puts us into relationship with God where we produce beautiful fruit unto holiness and spend our forever lives with the Lord in the new heaven. Don't you love that? I know I do. Verse five reads, I am the true vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. In order to birth fruit, you must be connected to Jesus. Fruit speaks to, it represents what you birth as a result of being connected to Jesus' vine system. The word abide means to live in. 
And Jesus is going to inhabit or live in a clean home, guys, a home where you are sowing into holiness and righteousness. What does God's word say about being clean? We're going to look at 1 Corinthians 6 and 11 and 1 Corinthians 6 and 20. 6 and 11 says, And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. 1 Corinthians 6 and 11 is talking about the people in 1 Corinthians 6 and 9 that God says are not going to inherit his kingdom. I did my first video on 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. If you have not seen it, go check it out. So 1 Corinthians 6 and 11 says, you used to be like the people in 1 Corinthians 6 and 9, but you don't do what you used to do. You don't act how you used to act. You don't look like what you used to look like. You do not act like the people in this world because you are sanctified. The word sanctified means set apart. And as a result, your behavior is modeled after the do rightness of God. Y'all know I love that, the do rightness of God. 20 says, for ye are brought with a price Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So that cleansing, that washing that we undergo once we have accepted Jesus as our personal Savior living for God, it came with a price. And you need to understand this. Jesus did not have to die on the cross. Because when they came to take him to persecute him, he told them, he said, Don't you know that if I pray to my Father... He will send more than 20, not 20, 12 legions of angels to come and get me out of here. Not 12 legions of regular folk. Not only that, but Jesus suffered when he paid the price on the cross. And how do I know? Because he says, he says, Father, he says, why have you forsaken me while he was up on that cross? So remember, though Jesus is God, he is still flesh. And he suffered the physical abuse of the cross in every way. So why did he do it? Jesus wants sinners to come to repentance. He wants every sinner to turn from their wrongdoings of practicing sin and inappropriate behaviors and activities which are outlined in the word of God and become a part of the true vine where you not only have life, but you have it more abundantly. Love it. Verse 6 says, If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If you are not connected to Jesus, you are removed from the vine, and you wither. Why? Because you're cut off from your source. And what's more, you are burned. Are you going to be uh, awesome in the kingdom of God producing beautiful fruit or a branch that is cast away and burned and guys I do want you to answer the question but not just with the lip service I want you to show God with your life or as we used to say don't just talk about it be about it hmm. verse 7 says and this is one of my favorites in this passage of scriptures and I know I say I love this verse I, I, but I love the word of God it's amazing and verse 7 is awesome because it says, If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what you want, or I'm sorry, ye shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Hmm. Now, I love this scripture, but I think it can be a hindrance for some people because they read it and they see, ask for what I want, and I'm going to get it. But there are some prerequisites to this thing. It says abide in me live in God he says and my words have to abide in you you have to have my words in you also this scripture does not say when you are going to get what you ask for sometimes guys we have to wait this is where your faith and belief that God will is matured and it only is matured when you wait I do have to point out also that the scripture does not say you will always get what you are asking for Let's say that you have been praying to God about a particular man or a particular woman. You desire them for marriage. You took this information before the Lord. You took it to God because you're wise and you don't want your decision to be based on self. 
because this thing has got to be God approved. It has to go through his quality check. That way you are protected, preserved, receiving promise, and you prosper in your marriage. Hmm. Now, if God comes back with a yes, hey, that's awesome. But if he says no, let it go. Continue to seek God um, about your spouse being busy with God's busy work, knowing no good thing will he withhold from you. So the marriage that you're praying about, it belongs to you. And then what about that job? And then God comes back with a no. See, what you don't know is, is that that company that you want to go work for is about to lay off a whole bunch of people. But because you sought the Lord and you trust him, you set yourself up for the blessings of the Lord that maketh rich and added no sorrow. And I love that scripture too. That's some good stuff. <laughs> uh, into verse 8. And verse 8 says, Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. Don't you love that? Don't you love that as a result of being connected to Jesus, God is glorified in our lives, thus we bear fruit unto righteousness and gain the privilege of discipleship for the kingdom of God? So what's the message here? The message is, Stay connected to Jesus, or as we used to say, be wrapped up, tied up, and tangled up in him. Because being connected to Jesus means you birth fruit, and as a result of sowing into holiness, you reap the reward. Do you know someone who enjoys rewards but isn't connected to Christ yet? Share my video with them. Because guys, we don't want anybody to miss out on being connected to the kingdom of God. And I don't want you to miss out. If you are not a subscriber, please subscribe. Check the notification box so that you know when I upload. Hit the thumbs up button for your girl. And until next time and always, continue to eat, sleep, drink the word of God because it really is everything. God bless.